we're doing a topical but biblical series. Usually we go through books of the Bible and, and just kind of study the scripture because, you know, so often people say they believe in the Bible, but then a lot of us don't actually know what's in there. And so that's why we, we teach through books of the Bible, but we take some breaks occasionally to do some, some more topical series. And so it's topical but biblical. And, and we're calling it next because we're, you know, what are we to do as followers of Jesus? You know, how, how do we live after the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus? And if we're believers and followers of him, you know, how do we live? And, and there's a lot really to unpack there. And really, we're talking about that every week, right? We're talking about, you know, okay, because Jesus lives, how do I live? And, but there's a lot to unpack, but we talk about three words, and that's kind of what we've been concentrating on, is, you know, we talk about gather, grow, and engage. And they're not magical words, but they're really kind of words we use to summarize what we believe believers should do. Uh, and it's not all the things we should do, but, but gather, you know, it's, you know, there's something about community that's important. And that's why we have an excessively long greeting time. Uh, because it's easy to kind of come to church, leave, and have never talked to anybody. And I know those of us who are, are more on the introverted side, you know, it, it's like I, there's an introverted church meme group. And that might be a little more challenging for those. And I love those. They're funny. But those of us who are maybe too far on the extrovert scale, too, uh, you know, maybe we might talk too long. But somewhere in there is this happy middle where we need to connect if we're a part of, uh, uh, of a community. And so we t- talked about that. And then growing is this, there's this necessity to grow in your faith because you can come to faith and belief in Jesus, but then kind of never grow up. And it'd be like a baby, you know, they're cute, they're cuddly, they're awesome. Like, you know, some of you are in that mom stage where you have the cute, but you, you, as much as you might enjoy that, you don't want your baby to stay that way forever, right? You don't want them 35, wearing diapers, going, mom, feed me, you know, (laughs) that would be awkward and weird. (laughs) Uh, And so there's this natural part of faith where we should grow uh, up in faith, Um, and then the third word, which, I, I, you know, I love them all, but, you know, really is engaging. You know, there's this life following Jesus where we engage the world around us. Now, a lot of people use the word serve, um, and, and I get it, but I like engage because it's not just serving at church, and we, we do value that. We, we love our volunteers. They make things move. You know, I, I often, you know, used to say, you know, if you <laughs> don't like organized religion, try us. Uh, because we're not that organized. What I really meant was sometimes I'm not uh, (laughs) because I need other people around me because I can't focus on the things that I'm called to do if I have to deal with all the other stuff. And so it's like now we have a team of people who are organized and run things. Uh, And and so it's important uh, that it's, it's, you know, service is important, but it's really, it's not just service at church but it's engagement of the world around us. We, we live differently because of that. So you can have a TikTok ministry. I'm leading, I'm, you guys are like, who's the guy with the TikTok ministry? He's over there. <laughs> He's ticking and talking. No, um, <laughs> I don't know. We'll make a joke out of that later. But, you know, it, it's th- this life of, of following Jesus means we engage the world in a different way. And so uh, a verse that we've read a few times that, that really kind of sums up some things is Matthew 28, 18. Jesus Uh, came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so Jesus comes, and he establishes the church, and and we've we've been given a mission, a mandate, to, to go and make disciples. And you know, uh, it's, we often kind of like joke about the hashtag one job because, you know, and, and you go online, you can see some kind of funny different things that people have. But, you know, it's like I remember, you know, I, we, I teased my son one time. We were putting kayaks on the car. And I'm like, hold this. And then I did something that made it impossible to hold on to. But it, it fell off. I'm like, you had one job, you know. <laughs> and we laughed about it. Don't worry. I didn't scream at him. But, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you have one job. We should kind of focus on that job. If you, if you went to work every day and had one thing you're supposed to do, and that most of us have jobs with a lot of other things right? But, but it's yet one thing. You would ex- be expected to do that. And really, the church has this, this one job is to make disciples, which is kind of complicated and multifaceted at points. But, you know, step one is become a disciple. Because you can't make disciples if you're not a disciple. And a disciple is someone who learns and grows and, and becomes like Christ. And so 
you know, our, our first kind of job, if you will, is to kind of take care of yourself. It's like on your own plane, and hopefully, you know, they always talk about it. Hopefully, you've never been on the plane when it happens, but when the little mask drops down, what are you supposed to do? Put your own on before you help somebody else, because you could try to be helping somebody, and then you're out cold, and, you know, then, you know, they don't get help either. And so it's, you know, you put your mask on. We have to make sure that we're growing and becoming like Christ, but then, you know, we can make disciples. We help other people put that mask on. And that's our one job as the church. And, it, you know, I've often said, you know, because if you've been around a lot, and it's like uh, I was hanging out with some missionaries and stuff this week, and, you know, they, they love to focus on the, you know, the, the command to go. And that's, it's true, but, but if you actually look at the Greek, the original language that's written in, that's a participle. It's, you know, so it's, like, it's kind of more like having gone. <laughs> and, and so it's not, it's not necessarily a command to go, but going is this uh, you know, natural way uh, you know, to, we, we, we will go places throughout life, but the real command is to make disciples. We have to be disciples who make disciples. And that should be a natural part uh, of, of what it means to follow Jesus. And John 17, 18 says, just as, this is Jesus speaking, he says, just as you, the Father, sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And that sounds great, doesn't it? Like, we're like, oh yes, I'm sent to the world. That sounds great uh, until, you know, what do we actually do to that? Like, what does that mean? You know, you know, I'm sent into the world, but what do I do? How do I live? What is, what is it that I do? Uh, what do we actually do? What is God calling me to do? And I think a lot of us kind of get to the point in faith. If, if you're following, you're growing, you're becoming like Jesus. And then we kind of what some of us can kind of ask that question then. It's like, what am I called to do? And, I, you know, especially I remember working with 20-somethings. It's like there's, there's this point, you know, you, you're growing up. Uh, and it's like you kind of just have to do what your parents tell you to do for a long time. And they make you go to school, and you go, and you graduate, and you do things. And then it's like you turn 18, and they're like, ha, huh, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? You're like, I don't know. I don't know what I want for lunch. <laughs> you know, it's like how am I supposed to decide? And there's all these things. And then a lot of us struggle with, you know, trying to figure out what it is we want to do in life, right? Because, you know, what is God calling me to? I remember I, I, I experienced it before I found out there was a term for it, the quarter-life crisis. Anyone have that? At 25, you're like, okay, all goes well. I exercise, eat well, don't get hit by a bus. Maybe I get to live to 100. And so at 25, I'm like, am I on the right track? Because, like, you don't want to, like, totally miss things, right, and land in, like, left field or something. You, you want to, you, you kind of want to make an impact. You want to make a difference. You want to live, live your life in a good way. And so you kind of go, you, you, I don't know, I had this existential crisis, if you will, where I'm like, you know, what am I supposed to do? And I felt God's call, but then how do you live that out? And, you know, you know wh there's many things within that you can do. You know, just in general, like, for me, going into ministry was one thing, but it's, then there's all these other doors open, and it's like, what do you do? What are these? And one of the ways that, as a Christian, as a believer, that we find what we're supposed to do is we look at the way God's equipped us to do things. And so I want to read 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to read verse 1, and then I'm going to skip to four, starting in verse 4. So it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know, it, it, so it's important that we kind of understand and know these things. It says, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There's varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. And all these are empowered by the one and the same Spirit who portions each one as he will. So there's a variety of gifts. Now, don't get focused so much sometimes. Like we look at like the ones that get described, and, but then there's, like, there's others described in other passages and different things. I, I kind of just think about, you know, we all have been given different capacities, different gifts, different abilities, and, and then we have to kind of take those. And, and, you know, we all have different gifts. It should be obvious, right? Because some of you right now, think about something you do well. Okay? And three years, shout it out. No, I'm kidding. No, think of something you're terrible at. 
<laughs> like, like it, it, it's funny. I love the DIY projects online. You know, it's like, you know, those, a lot of you know, like, you know, I often, I'm helping Bob with projects. People think I'm better than I am because I'm helping Bob and they assumed I contributed more than I did. Uh, I'm good at picking things up and putting things down. I can do a little bit of construction stuff, but you see these like, Hey, I, I learned it on YouTube. I didn't need to hire a professional. And you're like, oh, that's sketchy. Because some of us might, we might try to do the home project that's like Pinteresty and nice looking, but then it kind of doesn't come out that way. And we discover maybe my gifts are not construction and craftsmanship, right? Or, or you might want to do something like lead worship. And most of you this morning are really happy about one thing and you don't even realize it. You know what it is? You're happy that I didn't lead worship today because I can't do it. I, you know, you need musical ability, apparently. Uh, you know, I had to lead worship one time at a church because sometimes, you know, I was the associate pastor at a little small church, and um, the pastor went away. He left me in charge. I was terrified. Someone was in the hospital on their deathbed. I'm like, they're going to die while I'm there, and I don't even know how to do a funeral. He's like, just talk to Larry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but, I, you know, it's, I remember one time I led worship. I have never seen guests leave so fast after the sermon. <laughs> uh, it was just like, they, it was like you know, cartoons where the, like the feet spin and everything, and there's dust going. They're like, oh my gosh, if that's the worship of that church. Well, it wasn't normally. Normally the pastor did it much better. He was gifted in that, right? Musical guy. Jeff, not so much. And so there's things you might want to do, but there's things that you're just gifted and empowered to do. And so there's, there's natural abilities, and then God kind of takes those things, and he gives us gifts too. And, and so, you know, gifts can be, a lot of times figure out what God is calling us to do. If you can't sing, you're probably not going to lead us in worship. If you can't play an instrument, you're probably not going to be on, on, on the worship team. And, and that's pretty obvious, <laughs> but maybe not for some people. You know, some of us do things well, and we do other things not so well. But gifts help us figure out what God's calling to do. Uh, you know, I, I think about it this way. If God wants you to do something, he'll give you the tool to do it. Or sometimes other people on your team to do it, too. It's, you know, if, you know, if I'm going to cut down a tree, what do I need? A saw, chainsaw, axe. I need, I need some sort of tool that does that job. And, you know, you know I've been cutting a lot of wood lately, and I, I enjoy it. But, you know, without a chainsaw working, uh, some trees are just a little too much, right? And uh, So you got to have a saw. And um, what would I need if I want to put a nail through wood? Or a nail gun, either one. <laughs> but, you, yeah, you, you, we were playing with it. I, we were constructing things with the nail gun yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Man, you know, you ever use the one? We had the one that like shoots 22 shells and drives the nail into, like, because we're like, driving into block and everything. I'll tell you, if you don't know anything about construction, just come use that. It's fun anyway. It's like, I mean, fortunately, Bob got it straight before I went at it. But <laughs> it's fun, right? But you need the right tool to do it because if you're trying to drive it through on your own, it's just impossible. Even like with a regular hammer, it not, might not be what you need. You need that, that ram set that drives that thing through, through, through concrete. And so we need the right tool to do the job. And so, you know, if, you know what do you need if you're going to go, you know, hang and cut drywall or paint? You need, you need different things. You need a paintbrush. You need, you know, uh, the knives to cut. There's all these tools. And when, whatever God has given you in your toolbox, you know, what, what are the ways he's empowered you, gifted you, it is one clue to look at how you're supposed to make a difference in the world. Now, you might pull together a team of people with other gifts, but your, your actual role a lot of times has to do with the way God's gifted you. Because God gives us gifts so that we can serve in a variety of ways. And we don't all have the same gift. Because it's, it's easy to look at someone else's gift and be like, man, I wish I could do that, or I wish I could do this. or you know, it's, I, I have a friend, we went away for this week of worship. I mean, a week, we have this pastoral meeting, and we, I had to go all the way up to Erie this week and everything. It was a fun trip because, uh, you know, you know, Denise got to go with me, which is always fun. She's my, she's my ride buddy. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, you know it's, I love it. But I have this friend who's there who was an American Idol contestant. And when he, and like, he leads worship or he's on the organ, man, it's like, it's, I look at that and I'm like, man, I wish I could sing like that guy, you know? <laughs> and it's like, I, lo I love it, you know? And I, I kind of get gift envy. But, but that's not what I'm called to do. You know, he might look, I don't know if he does, he might look and go, well, I like the way Jeff teaches. You know, I don't know, maybe he doesn't. He probably doesn't even listen to me preach. But, <laughs> but you know, it's easy to kind of look at someone else's gifts and go, I wish I had those. 
But, but God's given us all different gifts so we can uh, do different things. And there's this, you know, uh, you know uh, variety of the service. We all have different ways of serving. You know, if you, if you have the gift of teaching, you know, you, you might teach adults, you might teach kids. Uh, you, know, you, you, you know, you might teach groups of people or you might kind of sit down with people one-on-one. And, and uh, you know, a lot of times, you're know, trying to figure out what your gifts are, I think all, can also be complicated because, you know, uh, there's gift tests where people have kind of taken biblical gifts and they have some questions. You ever do those? My gift is the gift of cheating because I, can, I see patterns. And so, like, if I'm taking a gift test and I want a particular gift, I can manipulate it so I can get that particular gift, right? Because, you know, some of you are like, man, that's weird. <laughs> that just goes along with my gift. I have the gift of manipulation. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, no, I, I, you know, but because I tend to see patterns and things, it, it helps with teaching. But it's hard for me to take those gifts. But a lot of times, the, the best way, I mean, again, I, I think the gifts can be good. I, I think the gift tests are good. If you want to take an online one, that's kind of a good starting inventory. But a lot of times, the best way to see what gift you have is, is to ask people around you. Because if, if you know, some people, like, I, I, have, I have, you know, friends who, they're like, I want to teach, and I have, I have the gift of teaching, and then they teach, and it's terrible. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it's because they haven't spent the time learning, but it's sometimes it's because, you know, and you may not be ready to use a gift, but, you know, you have you kind of, a gift should be affirmed by the people around you. If you, if you have, I, I, I'm using worship all day. I'm not, I'm not complaining about anybody on the worship team. They mostly sit over here and, you know, but, uh, you know, if you were saying, like, I have the gift of leading worship but couldn't do it, we'd all go, no, we, we do not affirm that. Uh, you know, and I, it's the awkward, like, you try out for the worship team and, like, you're, you're singing and everyone, oh, but no, <laughs> but you can still lead. But the point is, you know, God will give you a gift of, you know, uh, 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 to, to accompany that. Like, there's people who play guitar. There's people who play drums. There's people who play the keyboard. I wish I could. I always wanted to. I, I'd love to sit down at a big grand piano and play. You know what the problem is, though? I don't have the gift, and I haven't put any work into it. <laughs> uh, and so I can't. But, but all of us have gifts. And, and a, a lot of times, you can, you can, again, you can ask the people around you, you know, uh, and, and then you have to spend time developing that, too. You know, I'm going to use Lewis as another example because he's over here. You know, it's taken, it took years to really learn to play the keyboard and piano, right? You didn't just, I mean, there are those people who just kind of like play at, at birth or something. That's weird. That's awesome. <laughs> but, but, you know, most, it, it takes work and effort. You don't just suddenly start playing every song that there is. <laughs> but, you know, um, but, you know, we have ability. Now, some of us, I don't have the ability. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much I work. I'm not going to be as good as Lewis. <laughs> um, it's our new slogan for the church. It doesn't matter how hard I work, I won't be as good as Lewis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, but there's, and there's these variety of ways to use it. And so Paul goes on and explains kind of how each gift is important. Uh, you know, we, you need eyes, you need hands, you need feet. Like these are, but you also need more than eyes and hands and feet, right? Like there, there's organs in the body that I don't even know what they do. But, you know, I don't want to get to take them out. Because, you know, it's like, I don't know what the spleen does. And, you know, I, you, all the nurse people are kind of, I'm looking, I should have asked you what spleens do before I got up here. I know it's something. And I remember I had a friend who couldn't play basketball with us because it might get bumped and, like, break and because he, he'd been sick. And, you know, and we, you know, I don't have the gift of basketball. We, uh, we thought it was a contact sport growing up because no one showed us how. Because, like, you know when you tackle someone during basketball and then everyone's like, what are you doing? That was our... our <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, you know, every, 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 everything is important. Every, every part of your body is important. Um, you know, we, we need our eyes so we can see. But it, we wouldn't just be all eyes. That would be a weird body, right? Like, it was just, that's like sci-fi scary stuff. Or, you know, uh, we, you know, we have two feet. We don't need three. You know, I, I saw some circus thing. I don't know if it's true or not, where a guy had three legs. And I, I don't know. Like, it, it just, I mean, it seems cool, like sci-fi-y. But, like, you know we kind of work better with two. You know, it's a, the natural, normal thing. And so we all have different gifts and abilities. And it's to put together one body. And, and so we might all want to be the mouth. We might all want to be the feet. We might all, you know, but we need spleens. You know, we even need the appendix. We're finding it might have some functions. I don't know. But I, I know if you get it taken out, you get lots of ice cream. So I've tried to get mine taken out just for the ice cream. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, and, and everything's important. You know, I... <laughs> I have a shirt, some of you have seen it, I've never preached in it, but, you know, maybe you see me around, it's like this flamingo, and it says, you know, don't skip leg day. Um, 
that's sort of a lifting thing, and, and some of you understand. And, you know, a lot of guys that go to the gym, all, the, all they do is up here, man, because you want to look, like, big and strong. And it's like, you know, it's like there's jokes. It's like you go in for leg day. The best way to warm up for leg day is to chest. <laughs> you know, and, and some guys, they spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, and, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I love me some bench press. But, <laughs> you know, I have this don't skip leg day shirt. Uh, and here's the thing about leg day. Um, and some of you don't, it's at the day where you go and you work on your legs. And if you haven't done it before or you haven't done it in a long time and you go and you do leg day uh, the right way and hard, which, you know, that tends to be I like to lift heavy things. And so the next day you struggle to walk. And if you haven't done leg day in a while, you'll hurt in muscles you didn't know you had. Like you're looking at a chart going, what in the world? Something hurts I didn't know I had. <laughs> because here's the thing, you have a lot more muscles than you might even think about on a, on a daily basis. Do leg day, you'll, you'll find leg muscles you didn't know you had because they hurt. But all of those are important, right? They, they help us walk and function. And, you know, sometimes I have a weird sprain or something and I can't walk right. And I'm like, man, I didn't even know. I didn't, I didn't know what a piriformis was until recent years until I heard it. Uh, <laughs> some of you are going to look that up right now. And, and, you know, everything's important. You know, I, I heard a speaker one time. They said, what's the most important part of my body right now? And um, I was listening to him while not watching him, so it didn't strike me. But I was like, you know, he's like, my big toe. Because you don't think about it, but a big toe is important, right? Because you know, we think of the mouth, we think of, you know, maybe the leg strength. But, you know, if you've ever known anyone who lost a toe, like, you have to learn to walk again. Because it's, it's such an important thing to stand. And so you might not think of your big toe every time you get up to speak, but your big toe is important. And that's how God's created it. It's all of us has functions and things within the body of Christ that matter. And you may not, you know, get the glory, so to speak. Like, it would be weird if I took off my shoes right now and showed you my big toe, right? Like, you'd be like, I'm not coming back to this church. <laughs> There's been a lot of weird things. The big toe thing went too far for me, Jeff. <laughs> but, but it's important. And not every gift is always as visible as others. But again, they're all important. Everyone has functions and jobs. Um, you, know, uh, you know, even for church day, you know, um, we needed people who served, right? There were people as you came in, there were people greeting, right? You, you may not even notice it, but just opening the door, friendly smile, because like first time you go into a church, it's weird and scary. You're like, I don't know, is this a cult I'm joining? Like, or, <laughs> I went to a church where they locked the door after you get in, came in, and I was like about to freak out. I'm like, I was about to walk out, but now you've told me I can't leave till a certain part, and you know, those of us who you know, have little authority issues too, you know, it's, anyway. I stayed, I, I calmed down, but it was weird, <laughs> but you don't know, and so, like, just a friendly face, I agree, it's such an important thing, it's often overlooked, you know, uh, people who run sound and computer, I often joke, if anything is wrong, it's the sound guy's fault, truth is, they do so much right the whole time, and usually, if something goes wrong, it's me, because I, you know, forgot to turn on my mic, or I stepped too close to something, or, you know, I, you know but I, I love to blame other people, because I don't want to accept that, no, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but running soundboard, that's important. You know, people played and sang in the band, that's important, right, because, you know, we couldn't have done it without them, uh, you know, but here's the thing, did you think about anybody who cleaned the church yesterday? No, because if we came in and there was like trash all over the place and there was dirt everywhere, you'd be like, man, this, this church doesn't care about much, right? Like, and, and, you know, and so, we, you know, we need people who, you know, do that kind of stuff. yard work. You know, you may not think about it, but how we present the church matters to people. And, and so we spend time cutting the grass. I need to get a little more weeding done, but I can only get so much done yesterday. But, you know, it's, you know, we, we weed, we mulch, we do kind of things that, that it's not, on the one hand, it's like, it's just how the building looks, but on the other hand, it's how the building looks. And, you know, if you're going to be a good neighbor to people, if you're going to have, like, not a scare, if this looked like a haunted house, you know, maybe we'd get some people coming in, <laughs> uh, but then I don't know if we'd want that. No, <laughs> it would be a kind of a weird, different experience versus you, you want to be a welcoming place. And most of us, same thing, we do the same with our home, right? You, you, we work on it, we Pinterest it, it, it. is that a word, Pinterest it? Uh, we make things look nice because we want people to feel welcome. It's the same way. And, and so there's a lot of things that, that people have done to, to help that we may not even see. You know, uh, most of you probably didn't think about it, but we're glad people could do HVAC stuff. 
because it's, you know, it gets a little warm, we need the heater. I mean, a little warm, we need the air conditioner, a little cold, we need the heater. There's all these, like, functions and things, you know, and, and we have a, I love this old building. I really do. I've, I, you know, I, didn't, I never saw us in an old building until we ended up in this old building, and then it's like, you kind of fall in love with it, but you also struggle with it. It's like a lot like a spouse. <laughs> um, <laughs> because... <you> know, <laughs> You know, it, like when you have an old building, things go wrong. And, you know, it's like you're like, what in the world on some things? You find broken things. You're like, why did they do it this way? But it's, it, it's, this, it's, this, it's a relationship. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I, I love, but we need people to fix things that get broken here. We need people to, to serve us coffee because Jeff's sermons are boring and we have to stay awake. No, um, you know, it, it just, it, it's another good way just making people feel welcome. Now, here's the, I'm saying all this not to guilt you into working on a Sunday. You know, I, that's, not, that's not my intention. But I, I would encourage you to, to use whatever gifts and abilities you have to get involved because we, we do need those things. But it really, it's to show you the value of the people who serve. It's to show you the, the value of, of what you can contribute uh, and opportunities to be involved. And, and, and so we need a lot of people on any Sunday morning to, to make things work. And we can make, more people will make things even better. But, and, and here's the thing. If you're more involved and more connected, you'll feel more a part of this whole thing. And, and that God's designed each of us to have a contribution and a way to make. Uh, a little contribution. Now, some of us, life circumstances, it's hard when you got little kids at home and stuff. You know, just showing up might be the only thing you can do. Maybe be a nursery backup. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, you know, there's opportunities for everybody to, to be involved. And that's what we should be people who engage the world around us. And uh, one of the reasons we even gather, we talk about that, is because, you know, the, the church needs your gifts. I, I, I love a quote. Um, there's a there's a quote. Uh, this random churchgoer said, I didn't really like worship today. And Francis Chan said, that's okay. We weren't worshiping you. Um, I love it. Well, I try to work that into a sermon whenever I can. <laughs> because, you know, um, you know you got, I love that. But similar is, you know, people come and they say, I didn't get anything out of church today. And I, I, as a pastor, I love it when people say that. Um, no, that's, that's sarcasm, you know, for those of you who don't read sarcasm well, you know, but uh, here's the thing, you know, I hope you do get something out of church, don't get, don't get me wrong, but, you know, sometimes maybe church needed to be structured and things needed to be said for someone else to hear something today, and it's not always about us. We tend to make everything about me, everything about you, and so we're, we worry, you know, you're here to contribute and give not just get. And so church is a place where we come, the, the gathering of the church, because we are the church and not the church building, this thing we do we call church uh, because it's the gathering of the church together. Uh, it, it's not, you know, hopefully you get something out of it, but it's also an opportunity to come together and uh, serve one another. You know, sometimes just being here, having coffee with someone and talking to someone who needs being talked to, not like being talked to, but like needs connection, that's a way of, to serve. And, and so there's all these different ways that we're involved and we're a part of things. And, and church isn't just about, you know, did I get my goods and service for the day? Jeff's sermon was a little off today. Well, it's off every week. <laughs> but, you know, no. But, but it's just, you know, you may, you, you may or may not get something out of it. But, you know, maybe it's for other people. You know, how have we contributed? Because it shouldn't just be about, you know, you know, what was the music good? Was the preaching good? That's a lot of pressure on us, man. I can't, I can't tell you what kind of pressure. <laughs> it's about all of us being a part of things. And, um, you know, it's, uh, everyone's really needed to make things the way that God intends them to be. I, I loved yesterday we had a work day. I know we didn't have a lot of notice on it, but we just, it was like availability of a day, and we had to, we're kind of, we've been working on, we've been remodeling some things downstairs, and uh, so we appreciate everyone who could come. Uh, if we didn't make it and just want to come sometime and work, I will give you a key to the kit church. <laughs> you can come do work. No. Uh, but, you know, we, we had to do some work yesterday. It was kind of fun because, uh, we're working on, we're redoing kids' church, kind of making that more welcoming and fun. And, uh, 
it's just a, it's been a big project, so it's it's been ongoing for a while. And so we were, we were kind of working on that, and Josh and I were replacing some lights because you know old fixtures and stuff. And you know uh, I wanted Josh to be shocked a few times, so he knew how to work with like. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know we, we were doing that, and then it was like we slipped over, and then Josh was helping Bob with the door. L was helping me do some drywall stuff, and I looked up, and suddenly everyone was like kind of done and leaving, and we're like we ended early because people got so much done. And it's like I go in and people had scraped and painted. They'd done all these things. And I was like, wow, this looks great. We still got a little more work to do. Uh, but we got all like what we thought we'd get done gets done. And then it's like I thought I was going to have to help Bob with the door. I look over the doors working. I'm still working on the drywall because I'm not a fast drywaller. <laughs> but And I found another project I could do before I close up that drywall. Because <laughs> let's start another project before I finish this project. Uh, I'll get it done eventually. No, but... <laughs> But here's the thing, everyone's kind of working, doing their stuff, and things move quickly. And, and I'm not saying that to guilt you into not coming to the workday, <laughs> but, but, but it, it's, just, it, it's really this picture of what church is, what community is, what serving is, because all of us kind of doing different functions and things, and suddenly everything gets done. And, and that's, church is supposed to be this, uh, this connection, this community, and we all have these functions. This is, each is is given a manifestation, manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. We all serve for the common good, not just we want. Now, my gift is not about me. It's for you. Your, your gift is not about you. It's for us. And, and so God gives us gifts and abilities to serve, to engage the world around us. And it's not just in this church building, but around the world. And, and so we use those to love and to serve one another. Um, and I think about it a lot, like I think another example is I think about bands. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, obsessed with worship team because I apparently, there's just a great picture of something, of the gifts I don't have. Like if you need something picked up and put down, who are you going to call? If you want to learn piano chords, who are you going to call? Lewis. Uh, <laughs> not Jeff. <laughs> but, but I love the idea of, you know, like music because, you know, everyone plays a part and they're all important. You know, they need to have the same music, a song, the music seems good to hear. But, you know, church is kind of like a band. It's not a solo act for one to perform and everyone else to enjoy, but each thing plays its part. Um, I, I remember early on, because we're at we're a transient community. People come and go. That's just the nature of things. And I remember uh, my, my friend came and played drums for like in the early days. We didn't have a drummer. And it was like, I didn't think anything about it. And then he played drums. And I was like, oh, my gosh, the worship was so much better today. No. <laughs> but it was, it was like a fuller sound. Now, I may not have thought about percussion all the time, but it made the difference in the music. I didn't understand. I'm not a music, music guy. I'm more likely to listen to lectures all day long. I'm more likely to read a lot of books uh, because that's my, my gifting. But I enjoy music. And, and, like, I didn't understand. But when I heard the drummer, I was like, oh, my gosh. It's kind of like a bass player. <laughs> you know, you can tell when it's not there. <laughs> but most of us are not, like, great bass playing today. You should. Give a shout-out to our bass player. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, all those instruments come together to give one sound. And there's a unity to it. And, and really, that's what church is. We all have these different gifts and abilities and ways of serving. And when they all come together, it makes us who we are. It gives us our own sound. Uh, and, and ultimately, you know, we're all on this same mission or task. 1 Corinthians 9, 22 and 23 say, when, when, I, when I, this is Paul speaking, he says, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring uh, the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find the common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Okay, number one, he's spreading the good news. That's a good thing, right? But I, I remember when I, this is one of the passages I was assigned to translate when I was in school. And, uh, you know, translation is an interesting thing. If you've never translated from one language to another, it's not one-for-one -one stuff. It's like you're kind of trying to understand the language and its context. And it's like, it's not that this is a bad 
translation, but most will say and share in its blessings. And it's like, I was like, what does that mean? That was before the whole hashtag blessed and, you know, the things I have with that. But it was like, I was, I was really trying to kind of, I was looking at the original language. I couldn't, and I was like going, I did my translation, but my translation was worse than anything I found. Uh, but, you know, it's something you're like, you're looking at all these different translations. I remember being in the library. In those days, there were libraries, and we went to them, and there were books. And you, you know, you had to like pull off different books to look through. Tra- now you can like hit one thing and, you know, see a hundred translations, you know, in a moment. Uh, every English translation. <laughs> but um, I, I remember kind of kind of wrestling with it. And then I found this translation, uh, which is, uh, I like from the message. If you don't know, uh, Eugene Peterson translated the message. Uh, he was a pastor over in Maryland, I believe. And so, you know, he kind of, he just faithfully pastored for a number of years, no big scandals, <laughs> you know, what we want to see in a pastor. Uh, you know, he had a friend named Bono. I don't know if you've ever heard of that guy. Um <laughs> Some of you haven't, and that shows you grew up too much in the Christian world. <laughs> but the rest of us who uh, have a different music experience. Anyway, uh, it says this. Even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I voluntarily became a servant to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people. Religious, non-religious, meticulous moralists, loose-living immoralists, the defeated, the demoralized, whoever. I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I did this all because of the message. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. And I, I think that's sort of a better thing. It's not that we get something out of it. I mean, we, we should get something out of it. But really, we get the privilege of being in on it. Like, it's a privilege to be a part of the kingdom of God. It's a privilege to get to serve and be doing things, and uh, we get to be in on it. It's not just watching the game. We're in the game. I love sports. I don't know if you ever knew that. You know, I talk you know, occasionally about, you know, picking things up and putting things down, and, you know, I, I football, wrestling, I like track, I like throwing objects, like shot puts. I have a shot put in my garage. How many people have a shot put in their garage? You know, I, 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 but I, I like sports, but you know what surprises most people? I don't watch a lot of sports. You know, I'm actually more like, let's watch a Lifetime movie. No. <laughs> sensitive. Uh, but, you know, but my wife actually watches more football than I do. Uh, I, you know, and I do, I enjoy watching sports, but, you know, what, what I really enjoy is playing the sport more than just watching it, right? Like, if I had the choice between, you know, watching wrestling or going and wrestle, I'd wrestle. Although now I'm old and parts hurt and I would probably have to go see other people back at my doctor's office. Uh, I am having trouble with this bicep. I'm, oh, anyway. Uh, hippo, hippos, hippos. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, you know, but we, the thing is, we get to be in on it. The life of faith is being in the game, not just watching from the stands. That's this privilege we have in Christ is we get to be a part of the team. Um, you know, 2 Corinthians 5 says this. All of us, all, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. And, and so we're a part of this, you know, we reconcile people to God, we, we share the gospel. It says, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So, and I love this, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned, to be the offering for our sins so that we can be right with God through Christ. You know, all of us are Christ ambassadors. Ambassadors, you know, if I was an ambassador to Ethiopia, because, you know, I love Ethiopia, I, would, I wouldn't represent myself, right, and my interests. What do you, you represent the interest of your country. <laughs> and, and so we get to represent Christ to the world. You know, we get to tell the story. We get to invite other people to this party. And, and that's a privilege to be that. And you know, um, it's interesting when you think about things and you think about, you know, the disciples Jesus chose. And you know, I'm often reading the Gospels and working through them. Um, I've been working through this book called Luke um, for a little bit. No. <laughs> uh, but I, I love the Gospels. I love the stories of Jesus' life. And, and you know, it's kind of, it's funny when you think about it. You know, when you think of some of the main disciples, he chose like a variety of people, but he chose like fishermen. Like, the, I don't, I've known a lot of fishermen who 
like fish for a living and that kind of thing. And you're probably not, if I was going to start a religious movement, go, you know who I should get? Fishermen. <laughs> Most of the ones I knew are a little rough around the edges. You know, I'm sure Peter wasn't uh, <laughs> hacking people's ears off with a sword in the garden. Uh, just a little Peter on you. But, uh, but he chose kind of interesting people. He chose fishermen. He chose, you know, a tax collector. You know, it was kind of like a, an unliked person in that time. I have, a, I have a whole different perspective on Matthew now after watching The Chosen. Like you, I'm like, what's he? <laughs> oh, no, yeah. uh, anyway, you kind of, these ordinary people, and they wouldn't be people that, you know, uh, you know, if, you, if you've ever been in a position where you're hiring somebody, it's just weird to read resumes, you know. Now they have AI read resumes, and there's little tricks you can do to kind of, which goes through AI to kind of get you, and I'll, I'll tell you about that later. But, <laughs> um, don't want to mention it out loud, but you can probably Google it and find the same thing. Uh, you know, they may not have been the best examples of this is the person we should hire for, for our disciples, but here's the thing. God uses people, even weak and broken people. It's like you don't have to have it all down. You don't have to be this perfect example of faith. You could still get used by God. You still get to be on the team. You still get to play the game. Um, you know, and it's funny because you know, some of us really... Uh, I, people are either overconfident or insecure. Some of us were like, you know, you're like, oh, the disciples are messed up. No, I'm not as messed up as them. <laughs> you know, we're, we're like right to the confidence. Others of us are like, I don't think I could do it, <laughs> even though Christ is in me. I, and we, we tend to be in extremes, probably somewhere in the middle. Well, there's no one in the middle. See, it's a, no, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, people kind of tend to be one or the other. And, you know, you know, our past failures aren't indicators of a future, um, uh, you know, potential. Like Peter, he messed up. He, he went for, I, I, love that, I love the fact that Peter goes from, you know, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus is like, oh, upon this rock, I will build my church. And like a few moments later, he's like, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> uh, because, you know, we all have those moments where we're, 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 we're living right and doing things and kind of go in the right direction, and then we're kind of not so much. Uh, <laughs> you know, but here's the thing. You know, God uses all of us, and God's given us power to, uh, to, and boldness to proclaim him. And we can overcome sin. Not that we'll ever be sinless, but hopefully we will sin less over time. And we can do things we couldn't do before because God has called us to be a part of this. And you know, kind of thinking about the, this whole series and what it's been, is you know, step one is like follow Jesus. <laughs> you know, uh, Jesus wants you to follow him. And, and it doesn't mean on Twitter. It doesn't mean on Facebook. It's you know, actually, it doesn't mean physically because you can't like literally follow him. Uh, but it means we become like him. And, and so when we enter into a relationship with him, uh, you know, we enter into to faith. It's that it's it's lifetime of becoming and like him and following him in our lives. And, and then the second part of that is that I, you know, because I, I think people sometimes they just kind of, they start to follow and then never really get any different. Our lives will look different because we should grow in Christ. Now, you all know that sometimes I struggle when someone cuts me off in traffic or something. It's occasional. And so I know one or two of you also have that struggle. You know, it, I'm not, but here's the thing. <laughs> you know, my, my level of upsetness is a lot different now. I remember one time I was riding to the airport, and this guy cut me off. I'm like, whoa. Uh, and I was driving my friend, and he's like, That's, that was your upsetness? Like he, was, he was like, I would be a lot more upset. I'm like, I'm an old dude, man. I just, I've been there. It's, it doesn't do any good. I just kind of learned to deal with it. But you, know, you might not feel great internally, but you, you don't act out. Like, you shouldn't be following people to Wawa. I shouldn't have to tell you that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you, you should start to grow in your faith. And, and then, you know, the third thing is, you know, we get involved in using the gifts that God has given us to serve other people. You know, he'll give you a part in the greatest mission ever.